Let's take a look at some Bible verses on election and God's chosen people and whosoever will. Now, people will say that if you believe in election, that they'll accuse you of being a Calvinist. Calvinist was, Calvin, John Calvin was a guy that, uh, he was responsible for bringing together the Geneva Bible, and he was part of the Protestant Reformation along with Martin Luther. Now, I've read almost nothing of John Calvin, so I don't know how I could be a follower of John Calvin, but it seems to be both God makes the choice and we make the choice. So let's examine not so much my opinion. Let's read what the Bible has to say on this matter. In Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 33, and verse 19, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And who's the he? God. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Hmm. So God's going to be gracious to those who he's going to be gracious to and will show mercy on whom he will show mercy. Okay. Does that mean he's going to show mercy to everybody? I don't know. Let's keep reading. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 8, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Hmm. Okay. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Hmm. Okay. So does that sound like Everybody, whosoever will. Let's take a look at Joshua chapter 11, verse 20. Speaking of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, right? For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts. Who did the Lord harden their hearts? Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look at uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return unto Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. Exodus 7, verse 3. And I, who's I, God, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Exodus 14, 4. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them 
And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Hmm, okay. Back to Joshua 11.20. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, honestly, I'm not sure if this particular verse is specifically talking about Egypt or if it was talking about one of the Canaanite nations. But that's not the scope of my study. I just wanted to prove to you that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And then the Lord did all those miracles. And then finally, when they did let Israel go, they chased after them. And they crossed Israel crossed the Red Sea, and then when Pharaoh's army tried, well, guess what? They didn't quite make it. They, uh, they should have taken some swimming lessons, but they didn't. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 15. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he choose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. And when you read seed, think about children. Okay? Only the Lord have had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he choose their seed after them, even you above all people. Even you above all people, as it is this day. Very interesting, huh? 1 Kings 20 and verse 42. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. You see, the Lord appointed a man for utter destruction. Now, if you want to read the entire chapter in 1 Kings chapter 20, you could read about how the king of Ahab, the king of Israel, his capital was Samaria, not Ju Ju Jerusalem, how he, um, he fought the king of Syria, and the Lord actually let him prevail. Now, Ahab was not a good king. But nevertheless, for the people's sake, he let the, uh, him win. But he didn't, Ahab, the king of Israel, did not do what the Lord commanded of him by the prophets. So, you know, it said, thus saith the Lord, because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, Therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. Hmm. In Second Chronicles 6, chapter 6 and verse 6, But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. You see, God chose David to be the king. Did David decide, well, I, I'm, I, I want to be the king of Israel? Uh, no. I mean, he accepted the commission. Okay, and that's how it works. You know, for example, in the U.S. Army, they put you through officer's candidate school. They give you a commission. You can refuse it. And say, well, I don't want to be in the army. I don't want to be an officer. But they have to pick you. And then you have to accept it. And David. 
David was chosen by God himself to be the king. And of course, David accepted that. So it's a little bit of both, you know. Let's take a look at Psalms 33 and verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Ooh, there's that terrible word again. See, people that think that you decide everything, they, they, they don't want you to read these kind of verses. You know, elect, chosen. I mean, God, God makes the choice. And if you keep listening, well, you will hear a lot more of this stuff. Psalm 65, and verse 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. Who? The Lord choosest, right? Blessed is the man whom thou choosest, and causest to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of the holy temple. Of course, back in the old days, they had a temple made of stone with hands. Nowadays, the holy temple is those in whom the bodies of flesh, in whom the Holy Spirit dwells. All right, in Acts chapter 7 and verses 46 through 49. Who found favor before God and desired to find a temple for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him an house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hmm. Okay, so if the earth is God's footstool, I mean, you know, what, what kind of temple are you going to build him, right? Uh, in Acts chapter 17, verse 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars' hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needeth anything, seeing he giveth to all life and bread and all things. So, Psalms chapter 78, verse 67 through 70. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. See, God chose Judah to be the tribe of the kings, just like God chose Levi, of which Moses and Aaron were of, to be the tribe of the priests, to serve in the tabernacle and in the temple. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion which he loved. And he built a sanctuary like high palaces, like the earth, which he hath established forever. He chose David, also a servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. Isn't that funny? Christ was born of the line of David. And David was a shepherd. And Christ compared himself to a shepherd. That we are his sheep. In 
in John chapter 10 and verses 23 verse through 29. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him. So here it is, the Jews are, you know, who's hanging out in the, the temple? The Jews, right? Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. See, Jesus is the shepherd. And did they, were they not of his sheep because they didn't believe? Or did they not believe because they were not of his sheep? You see, people that say, oh, well, you know, if they would have believed Jesus, they would have been his sheep. I, you know, I tell you what, the 12 apostles, did Jesus pick them or did they pick Jesus? In John chapter 15 and verse 16, Jesus speaking to the apostles. He says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go out and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. And ye should go and bring forth fruit? Who chose who? Jesus chose the apostles. In John 6 and verse 70, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Didn't Jesus even pick Judas Iscariot? Knowing full well that he would betray him? I think so. Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. All right. Psalms 135 and verse 4. For the Lord hath... Excuse me. In Psalms 135 and verse 4, For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. Ooh. In Matthew 15, 24, Jesus speaking, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In Matthew 10, 6, Jesus said, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Didn't Jesus say, My sheep hear my voice? Oh, yeah. Jesus said he's only for Israel. That's his chosen, his chosen people. All right, let's keep reading here. Oh boy, here we go. Let's start getting into the those that are chosen for something other. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 4. 
The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Hmm. Didn't God himself make Satan? Didn't he create did he did he know full well in advance that Satan would be lifted up in pride and rebel and try to kill God in a war in heaven? Uh, you know, think about it. God created Satan. Well, originally he was a he was the angel that covered the throne of God. He was created good. But then pride was found in his heart and he lifted himself up and war in heaven. He tried to kill God and take his spot. So, you know, think about it. God created Satan. There's a verse in the Bible. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I found it. Isaiah 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Well, God created Satan good, originally. But then he became evil. So when you think about it, God created evil. And I'm not saying God is evil. But if God created all things and some of these things became evil like people and, and Satan, when you go back far enough, God created evil. And I'm absolutely not saying God is evil. Proverbs 64, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. Proverbs 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. How about Isaiah 44, ver uh, verses 1 through 2? Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jezurim, whom I have chosen. Isaiah 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Do you know what election means? Uh, well, a few months ago, we had an election. People had a choice between two major political parties. They could choose Hillary or Donald. And depending upon who you listen to, both won. But the people made a choice. That's what an election is. A choice. Okay? For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Jeremiah, verse 1 through 5. Listen to this. Jeremiah, he, uh, he, boy, he, he, he had a tough life as a prophet. Everybody thinks, oh yeah, uh, Benny Hinn, he's a prophet of God, and he's rich and wealthy and does well, and God loves him and all this. Boy, I tell you what. Jeremiah went, was in prison, beaten, I believe he was beaten, and I mean, you know, guy had a rough life, because Jeremiah pronounced judgment, 
And if God made me a judge, I mean a prophet, I would be pronouncing judgment against America for all the wickedness. I mean, I know it's going to happen. It doesn't, it doesn't make me a prophet, but I mean, I just reading the word of God, you know these things. Jeremiah 1 5, before, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. What nations? The nations of Israel. That word nations there is the same word that they sometimes translate Gentiles. It's the same word. Sometimes they translated it Gentiles, sometimes they translated the same word, nations. Wasn't John the Baptist filled with the Holy Spirit while in his mother's womb? And when Mary came with Christ in her womb, the babe leaped for joy? Oh yeah, that is a fact, people. All right, let's take a look at Luke chapter 1. Oh boy, this is this is great stuff. I just love this. All right, Luke chapter 1, verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most, most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the Lord, it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things to the very first, to write under thee in order most excellent Theophilus. So Luke, who's a doctor, a physician, is writing to a Greek. Um, most excellent Theophilus. I'm, I probably pronounced that wrong. I should have taken Greek in Bible college, but I didn't. Verse 4, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. So she was a Levite, okay? And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both and they both were now well stricken in years. They were old people. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So evidently um, he, the husband, was also a Levite because only a Levite could go into the temple and do burn incense and what have you, okay? Uh, let's see, verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And they're, uh, oh, think about it. When you're burning incense, guess what that is? Holy smoke. Uh, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So here it is that God chose Elizabeth and Zacharias to have a son. The Lord even chose his name, John. Okay, they're not naming their son. God chose the name. Think about it. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Not all, many. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel 
shall he turn to the Lord their God. Not all, many. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, which is the Greek rendering of Elijah, okay? And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby, whereby shall I know this? For I am an, an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Um, you know, he's... I think basically here, he's saying, what are you talking about? I'm old. This is impossible. You know, my wife's old too. Are you nuts? Are you crazy? And Zechariah said unto the, that's the uh, modern Bob version, I guess. So. And Zechariah said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with with me in the days wherein he hath he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. See Christ came from King David. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. So, did, he, did Elizabeth and Zacharias choose to have John the Baptist, or did God choose them? Did God choose Mary, or did Mary choose God to have Christ? as her son. Think about it. God is making the choice here. Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind, what manner of salutation this should be? In other words, what kind of greeting is this? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yahushua, no, and shalt call his name Jesus. So did God consult with Mary and ask her if whosoever will, if she was willing to, to do this? No. She, God already knew she was an obedient um, friend. Some would say servant, but he says, you're going to have a, a child? And, well, let's see. Let's, let's, let's see what goes on here. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth the son and shalt call his name Jesus. He, God even picked the name. Of course, if you listen to the Hebrew Roots people, they'll tell you that this is wrong. we got to go sit at the feet of an unbelieving rabbi to get the true knowledge of God. I don't think so. 
And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, now, there's a difference in the way that Zacharias asked the question, and there's a way that Mary asked the question. She asked the question believing. She's like, okay, I believe this, but how's it going to happen? Whereas Zacharias said, this is impossible. I'm old. My wife's old. We can't have children. It's, you know. But Mary said, okay, I believe this can happen, but how, how is it going to happen? Okay, there's an angel. There's a difference in the way they were asking. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. See, Mary, Mary says, Whatever the Lord wants, so be it, basically. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered in the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. From whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded to mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent away empty. He hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And, a Barry, and Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her husbands, cousins heard how the Lord hath showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise this child. That's, this is a Levitical law. And they, called, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. See, when God names you, you don't change, right? His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. 
and fear came on all that dwell round about, and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Do you know what it means to redeem? Let's say you need some money. So you take a camera and you go to the pawn shop and you, 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 you get a loan on the camera. They keep the camera. And then after a certain amount of time, you've got to pay them the loan back plus interest. Well, when you go back to get your camera back and you pay them the extra money, you're redeeming the item. Well, Israel was under the curse of, of bondage of sin and death. And yet Christ is going to redeem his people. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, our enemies, and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham. Did God make a holy covenant and oath with the whole world? It says here he made it with our father Abraham. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet unto the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the desert, deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. See, God's people have enemies. Jeremiah 1 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Just like John the Baptist, same thing. So does God love everybody? How about Malachi chapter 1? Verses 2 and 3. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Beware, people, of the uh, so-called black Hebrews. They say that well, all white people are the children of Esau and that God hates us. And one day, when they kill all of us, they'll be uh, fulfilling God's will. Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Hmm. All right. Well, I think I'm going to make this up the end of part one. I've got some stuff to do, and uh, I'll be back. All blessings. Uh, this is part one. We'll have a part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All glory and honor. To the Lord and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.